the fourteenth year of Chinjua. Chapter 45 Somewhat Helpless Tang Fan had just been minding his own business, his body was automatically walking down the street but his mind was in a state of wandering elsewhere. The fist that was right in front of him brought him back to his senses, and he subconsciously withdrew two steps. His heel bumped against the edge of some tangerine seller's little basket, quickly unsteadying his center of gravity and nearly sent him down to the ground. Right then, someone reached out to grab him by the belt and hauled him to the side, thus averting it. Are you all right? Upon hearing this voice, he turned his head to find Suijo. The other was dressed in his official's robes, probably either having just gotten back from the Jinyue office or was on his way there. Yes. Tang Fan waved his hand. He wasn't as bold and strong as Suijo or Wang Ji but he was still a grown man. How could he have been scared by this little thing? He had merely had no defenses up which caused him to get caught off guard. After coming back to his senses, he realized that that punch really hadn't had too much power. The one who threw the punch was not deliberated going for him but because he hadn't been paying attention to where he was going whilst two passers-by brawled, he accidentally got caught up in it. Their simultaneous scuffling and quarreling were quite lively, and many stopped by to observe from the side. Tang Fan understood the sequence of events after hearing a bit of them. It was currently nearing the year's end. The 15th happened to be suitable for burning incense in ancestral worship, so the capital streets were even more exceptionally congested, where people were almost stepping on each other's heels and rubbing shoulders. Of the two fighting, one had been walking in front and the other in the back. The one in front had suddenly felt that his middle seemed to have been swiped at and his heart had jolted. Quickly feeling about for a spell, he then discovered that the bag he had put his money in was missing. Once he had looked behind him, he saw that there was someone following him, who shot him a grin. The first man had stopped at once, grabbed the fellow behind him and insisted that he was a thief. The other, not to be outdone, had insisted that he was innocent. They had then started to fight. The one in front said that he was going to bring him to see the authorities but the one behind refused to go, making the other think all the more that he was guilty. The man who got stolen from was now heard to be cussing. You look like a poor scholar. You said you didn't steal it and yet you're too afraid to go to the authorities with me. How is that not a guilty conscience? The one he fought with berated him back. Did that mouth of yours just get fished out of a cesspit? How can you insult someone like this? I didn't steal anything, so why would I go with you? Of course, I won't. Nearby people encircled them, lining along the streets, most were watching the excitement while some tried to soothe them. Tang Fan hadn't been cautious so he had gotten trapped in the middle. Looking at how the two parties were, they hadn't noticed that they had nearly hurt Tang Fan, continuing with their arguments. While they contended vigorously, someone was heard to say, You two, you two do you hear what I'm saying? No one did, of course, but when the two saw cold light glint in front of them as well as each involuntarily got pushed backwards into stumbling a few steps, they took a better look. Upon realizing that the one standing in front of them was a Jinyue, they quickly stopped. Sir, you came just in time. Please get justice for this lowly one, one hurriedly shouted of his wrongs. This man stole something of mine and still won't admit to it. Sir, don't listen to his nonsense, the other stated. I was walking down the street and was minding my own business when he grabbed my clothes for no reason, insisting that I'm a thief. Does a more unjust accusation exist? Sui Zhou said nothing but Tang Fan did. What did you say that he stole from you? he asked the first man. A pouch of silver. All my money is in it. I was going to use it to buy New Year's stuff, but now it's gone. The other man patted himself off angrily. What does your money being missing have to do with me? I don't have what you're looking for. The first man laughed coldly and said, won't the answer become clear when you're under arrest in a bureau? Even if you're not the thief, you must be his accomplice. 
Why else would you grin at me as soon as I turned my head? Don't flap your trap. All you do is recklessly accuse people, the second man reproached. Seeing that they were about to start arguing again, Tang Fan cut them off. He's not lying to you, he said to the first man. He really isn't a thief. The first man had a face of unhappiness. Tang Fan didn't care, simply turning to cup his hands towards the second man. Dare I ask for your good name? Since he was polite in asking unlike the rest, and also had a Jin Yiwei at his back, the second man swiftly cupped his hands to return the greeting. You flatter me. This lowly one's surname is you, named Hao. Fellow you, then, Tang Fan smiled. Then, he asked the first man, and how are you called? You're too kind. Those that know me all call me Landlord Luo. He was plump and ostentatiously dressed all over, he really deserved the appellation of Landlord. Smiling, Tang Fan asked him, Landlord Luo, look at the jade tablet hanging on his chest, and the jade pendant hanging from his middle. What is engraved on each? Not only did Landlord Luo focus his eyes on those things but everyone else did, too. Not many knew how to read in this day and age but some could still recognize these characters. Yu Hao's jade tablet was carved with Yu and Xiang, while the pendant was carved with the lone character Yu. Even though Landlord Luo was called a landlord, he was illiterate. His face showed some embarrassment. Noticing this, Tang Fan read the words aloud to him, then explained. Songs of Chu has a verse that says the vast Yu and Xiang. His character sizes conform with each other, which illustrates that both jade ornaments are unmistakably his. Why would a thief have these things on him? He also didn't hesitate at all when reporting his name. It's clear that he wasn't lying, so he wasn't the one that had stolen your purse. Landlord Luo was upset upon hearing that. Because Sui Zhou was nearby, he didn't dare to be rash, only verbally refusing to accept this. Who even is your esteemed self? We still need to all go to the authorities to see whether he's a robber or not. Your word doesn't mean anything. Tang Fan's expression immediately sank. I'm a prefect of the Shuntian Prefecture. I can help to nip a trifle like this in the bud so that you don't go and add troubles to my benefactors. If I haven't guessed incorrectly, you should also know in your heart that you how didn't steal your pouch. You're simply angry about your missing item so when you saw him smile at you, you were wanting to find someone to blame, right? D, don't be ridiculous. Landlord Luo answered, seemingly guilty. Since you want to see the authorities so much, we can go see them, the other replied indifferently. When it became clear that you were falsely accusing you how when the missing item is not found in his persons, you'll have to be punished with getting hit with the paddle. Have you considered that? Landlord Luo waved his hands on repeat. No, I don't want that. There's no need. I'm not going to bother with this anymore. With that, he drew back a couple of steps, turned his head, pushed the crowd aside and fled, not caring about the one he had just grabbed at. This had been something trivial to begin with, so now that it was resolved, Sui Zhou was disinclined to chase after and capture Landlord Luo. Yu Hao who had been unjustly accused, quickly gave his thanks while the onlookers all applauded Tang Fan's quick wits and attention to detail. Tang Fan and Sui Zhou squeezed out of the mob. After a good while of walking, peace finally returned to their ears. Are you going to the office? Tang Fan asked. Sui Zhou MN Ed. There's nothing to do today, I'm just going for morning roll call. You're unhappy. The other raised a brow. How do you see that? The profession of a Jin Yiwei is a bit like you prefix and requires observing things carefully. When it comes to quickly assessing the situation though, I'm not as good as you. You were born for the role of passing judgments. Walking with his hands behind his back, Tang Fan sighed. Right. I went with Prefect Pan Ben to see our mentor today and we had a bit of an argument where he couldn't understand my point of view. I'm even kind of doubting that I might have done something wrong. Guang Chuan, 
there's some things that I'm not sure would be appropriate to ask. The Jinyue is responsible for arrests, able to act on its own without needing to go through the court in advance. There's many cruelties unfit to ever be seen within the imperial prison, as well. You've experienced a lot has your heart ever wavered? Sui Zhou nodded a bit. It has. Noting Tang Fan's curiosity, he continued, you know that even though my elder brother is holding a position in the Jinyue, he has always been wanting to study for the imperial exam so that he can stand out. Tang Fan gave an affirmation, yes. You've told me before. When I was young, I also had that way of thinking and could understand his desire. He didn't want to be looked down upon in his status as consort kin and a military official, so he thought to stand out using his own skill. The difference between us lies in me acknowledging reality early on while he still hasn't. Tang Fan was a little rueful. The exams happened once every three years, that didn't sound like much of a cost but how many counts of three years were there in a lifetime? Every generation of the country had talents, yet the exams being what they were, they not only required an innate gift and perseverance but the element of luck, too. Relying on hard work alone would not grant success. How many talents of the nation participated in the exams every three years, really? To be able to kill one's way out of that massive army, they needed the ability to, for one Tang Fan had met Sui Zhou's brother before and he could tell from a glance that he was no such person. If he could be content with how things were and acknowledge his own limitations, obediently passing his days or even imitate his little brother by going out on assignments, he wouldn't be wasting years of his life. The fact that he still couldn't see his own situation clearly was a tragedy. When I had just entered the Jinyue, I handled a case, he heard Sui Zhou go on. A censor had denounced Consort Wan and her brother, Wan Tong, over their control of the imperial harem and the Jinyue, loudly denouncing them. Wan Tong became enraged, arrested him, locked him in the imperial prison, then framed the entirety of his family for some crime, getting them exiled. Since I was new and connected to the Dowager, it was improper for me to be ordered to the chore of escorting them. I knew that the family was innocent and also admired the censor for being strong-willed for daring to say what others didn't, so, I asked for the assignment of my own volition. I, personally escorted them to where they were relocated and even paid for the local officials that were keeping watch on the family to look after them a little better. I prepared to wait for these waves to pass, after which I would plead His Majesty for leniency and get them pardoned. Tang Fan had long known that Sui Zhou was cold on the outside yet warm on the inside, and took good care of his subordinate brothers but he didn't think that he would also do something like draw his blade and come to someone's aid when witnessing injustice on the way. He admired him as his heart warmed. If you went to plead for mercy right then, it would have just been slapping Wan Tong in the face. Once it was over, he might not even remember who these people were. Pleading His Majesty should have worked after that. However, Sui Zhou had no smile at all, tone heavy. When I returned to the capital, it was only to discover that the censor had already been tortured to death in the imperial prison. As for his family, two months later, I received news that they had all died of sudden illness. The other's smile also disappeared. Wan Tong had sent someone to do it. I don't know, but ever since that incident, Wan Tong has strictly kept to his word. No one else dared to put their whole family at risk were they to denounce Consort Wan and Wan Tong. Only then did I realize how naive, and absolutely useless my previous actions had been. It wasn't your fault. Sui Zhou nodded. From then on, I've curbed all impractical thoughts that I've had and never got the notion to leave the Jinyue again. I knew that if I had the influence within the Jinyue that could even balance Wan Tong out, that family might not have had to end up like that. That's why you've stayed there all this time. The Jinyue itself is a double-edged sword. Used well, it can serve the Great Ming. Used poorly, it becomes as it is now. Many things aren't right or wrong to begin with they depend upon how the one regarding them thinks and acts. Despite them being friends, they were usually busy with separate issues. 
it was rare for them to be able to chat side by side like today. Even with the surrounding noise and liveliness, Tang Fan gradually settled down. He sighed with a smile. Guang Chuan, others say that you're cold-faced and cold-hearted, believing that a military official like you will only act under orders, inherently a grade below civil officials. They have no idea that you see things more clearly than anyone else. I'm inferior to you in that. Sui Zhou shook his head, gaze softening. No, you're not. You just had a moment of confusion is all. If you think that you aren't wrong, press on. What your mentor or anyone else says isn't important as long as you have the path in your heart, nothing is unfeasible. Tang Fan laughed, achieving quick enlightenment. As you say, then. What about you? Do you agree with my stance? The country has been at peace for a while, Sui Zhou replied calmly. I think that it long should have been wanting wars and being on the alert, but Wang Ji's dramatic conduct is not a long-term solution. Big trees attract more wind, and this just made more people see him as an eyesore. Once he loses the imperial favors, he'll fall from the top, never to get up again. Interacting with him is harmless but be careful not to get dragged into the muck by him. I don't want you to get implicated. He was typically of few words but Tang Fan had never looked down upon his political wisdom. Now that the other had bare his heart, he truly understood that beneath Sui Zhou's reserved exterior was foresight and aspirations. No wonder the emperor had compared him to Sun Jizong. Supposing that he had the mind to, his achievements would likely get to be even greater than Sun Jizong's, in Tang Fan's opinion. Thinking like so, Master Tang's improper enthusiasm relapsed. It's as they say, learn the Dao in the morning, and you can die at peace in the evening, he joked. Your remarks, Huang Chuan, have caused my heart to be much more cheerful and open. Should I give a bow to you and call you, Shu Fu? If you want to. I won't mind, Sent Arch Sui casually answered. Tang Fan was still on sick leave these days, so there was no need for him to go to the bureau, while Sui Zhou was merely heading over to his office for appearances, so he wasn't in a hurry. They talked and laughed, walking slowly down the whole road. The weather had already changed from autumn to winter, gradually treading into the frigid season. Beijing's winters came fast and the people on the street that had just been seen wearing thin robes a minute ago were now all heavily bundled up. Having just recovered from illness, Tang Fan was wearing more but the warmth in his heart did not come from his clothes, it came from the attention and commentary of his good friend. Seeing that someone was peddling Tang Hulu on the street, Sui Zhou reached out and bought two sticks, then passed them to Tang Fan. Little Adong shouldn't eat so much. I'll help her by getting rid of one of these, the latter said with a grin, then took the sweet treat and begun to eat it. Sui Zhou was silent, thinking to himself, I already know you're a glutton. Just eat it. No need to make so many excuses. He stopped paying attention for just one second, and when he turned his head again, he noticed that Tang Fan's hands were already empty. Master Tang was a little embarrassed, tugging at him to walk back around. Come on, come on. Let's go buy another stick. The one I had just now had bugs on it, so I threw it out. Don't think that I didn't see those two bamboo sticks in your hand. Counting on Sui Zhou not to expose him, Master Tang stressed his face in order to beam as he said some nonsense. When new batch of Tang Hulu was purchased again, he let out a cry of surprise. I forgot something. Sui Zhou shot him a side glance, looking confused. They had said way too much already, what couldn't be said now just shouldn't be said. Tang Fan explained the bet he had made with Wang Ji. He owes me a feast at Xianjun restaurant, but he didn't bring it up when he visited last time. Could it be that he's planning to renege on it? Is food all you ever think about all day long? Did you already forget what I just said to you? Sui Zhou asked sullenly. Tang Fan smiled ingratiatingly. I haven't, I haven't. I'll keep my distance with him, I promise. But can't that wait until the bet is honored? 
No matter what, it's worth a lot of tales. His voice got quieter and quieter, while his expression got guiltier and guiltier, until he decided to just beat it. I'll take the Tang Hulu back to Adong ahead of time so that the coating doesn't melt off. I know you're busy, so off you go. Bye. With that, he vanished like a puff of smoke. Suijo shook his head, feeling somewhat helpless. Since Tang Fan was more or less, better, he couldn't be on sick leave anymore. His senior disciple brother might have been the Shuntian prefect, but he still had to do the work he should be doing. Thus, he resumed his single line, everyday life between the two points of Shuntian prefecture and home. On the day the Chiu family left the capital, he went to see them off. Despite their arguments and differences the status and affections of a mentor and disciple were still there. That would never go away simply due to fear of reproachful looks. Chiu Jun hadn't expected that a disciple he had parted poorly with a few days ago would come to say goodbye. The disciples and friends he had in the capital weren't many and even fewer would do this. This was what was called the ease of adding flowers to a bouquet, and the difficulty of sending charcoal during snow. It wasn't that Chiu Jun's popularity was awful but because everyone was adapting to the circumstances. Pan Bin himself had used an excuse to avoid being implicated. He had said it was because he was busy in the bureau that he couldn't come but the truth was that he was afraid of offending the emperor. Chiu Jun didn't blame him at all. In their community of government officials, being in a difficult position could be considered as a norm and Pan Bin had already dropped by, anyways. That counted as fulfilling his duty as his disciple. Even so, Tang Fan, Xie Qian, and some others still came. They were palace honorates from the same year but unlike Tang Fan, who was taken in as a disciple afterwards, Chiu Jun could only be regarded as their examiner. This made the old man felt a bit touched. The face he held towards Tang Fan wasn't as ugly as it had been that other day and he patted his shoulder in encouragement. I've thought carefully about what you said before, he started. Even though you disagree with me, it's plain to see that you've deliberated on this. I, myself cannot take an official's post, nor will I force my disciple to be as unadaptable as I. So long as you have the country and its people in your heart, not thinking about only yourself when you do things, you will not disappoint my hopes. Tang Fan hadn't thought that this usually stubborn mentor of his could be so open-minded. Perhaps getting demoted from the capital had made him get over this. The old fellow wasn't so stubborn today and was instead being reasonable. It was not only because he was his honorable mentor but Tang Fan did really respect Chiu Jun. He naturally didn't want to ruin their mentor and disciple relationship over a difference in political views, so he clasped his hands towards him upon hearing this. This disciple will carefully observe your instructions, Xu Fu. Their group said a few things more. Seeing that it wasn't early in the day anymore, Chiu Jun then mounted the carriage at the urging of his family. With his academic studies over the years, his home couldn't be stated as being wealthy, his carriages were packed with books, when not packed with people. The horse's back was whipped, the driver shouted, and the carriages rolled forwards, gradually distancing from their line of sight. Though Pan Bin was the Shuntian prefect, that post wasn't much in the capital and he couldn't really look after Tang Fan, just like last time when Wang Ji had stretched his finger out, he had been scared half to death, and had to push Tang Fan out to contend with him. Meanwhile, Chiu Jun wasn't obviously in an official's position but he had a celebrated literary voice, as well as a consistently pristine reputation within the bureaucracy. The man's reputation and the shade from his tree, could act as their backdrop for every day he was in Beijing. Now that he was gone, they were truly without anyone to rely on. While others mentors and examiners would either enter the cabinet or work as a minister, their branch had met with many difficulties. Once the carriages had completely banished from their sight, Tang Fan and the others began to leave. Xie Qian patted him on the shoulder. How about, after the capital inspection, you find a channel for getting yourself transferred back to the Imperial Hanlin Academy. Ever since our academy lost you, well, 
I really don't need to explain how uncannily lonely it is there every day. That's right, Wang Hua chimed in with a grin. I had been pretty happy at first, since we would at least be missing a criminal glutton whenever we went out to eat. I thought that I'd be able to eat a little more but who could have known that without your balancing seasoning, eating and drinking would be tasteless. Tang Fan sighed eyed these men and said, you just want to drain my coffers. Don't use a heavy word like drain, said Xie Qian. That really is how it is right now, especially for that one man, Lu Jian. All day long, he's full of complaints, saying that we have no idea how long we're going to steep in Hanlin for. He's even a little envious of you, someone who's left. As soon as the weather cooled, days would get darker. It was rare to see brilliant sunlight anymore. His mentor had been sent away and he was listening to the others grumble about how depressing and boring the Imperial Hanlin Academy was, but Tang Fan wasn't as sad as he had imagined he would be. That solely stemmed from his previous talk with Suijo, which had benefited him enormously. Once a person's conviction was confirmed, they would no longer waver nor hesitate. The corners of his mouth was slightly raised. Day after day passed, the step of the new year getting ever closer. A good amount of time had elapsed since the East Palace case and Wang Ji had long since departed the capital for the north. No news had ever come regarding what he had promised beforehand, where Tang Fan's rank would get brought up it was like everyone had already forgotten about it. Tang Fan, however, didn't mind. He was as terribly busy with his official duties in the prefecture as ever. During such a busy interim, the bureau had to close down. In other words, starting from today, Tang Fan and the others were formally welcomed into their yearly New Year vacation time. End chapter The Fourteenth Year of Chinjua Chapter 46 Woof! 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 Tang Fan couldn't recall how long it had been since he had properly enjoyed a full New Year celebration. After his parents died and his sister married away, the degree of importance he attached to this day was less than it had been before. As an official who lived alone in the capital, his holidays got increasingly lonelier by the year. He got accustomed to spending them alone inside his room, being at leisure as he read book while warming himself by the fire. Despite his habits, when Ah Dong cheerfully attended to pasting up spring couplets characters and serving fruit, those long unseen recollections once hidden deep within the depths of his memories, were rummaged out. She was young but she was still a lady of the family, more skillful with decorations and more mindful when remembering things. She alone took care of decorating the inside and outside of the house. Grown men like Tang Fan and Sui Jo wouldn't think to also hang a couple of red lanterns under the veranda in addition to the spring couplets, thus adding to the joyful atmosphere. At the approach of the year's end, Shuntian Prefecture had fewer and fewer things to do but the Northern Administrative Court Division was getting busier and busier. Every day, Sui Jo would leave early and return late while Tang Fan could come home a bit earlier to lend a hand. However, he was not one for household chores in the least. He couldn't even call upon himself to wipe things down with a rag. Ah Dong straight up pushed him outside in disgust. Don't add to my chores, gig. Go write some couplets and don't forget to cut out some red characters, write a couple fortune-bringing phrases on them, then paste one in each room. I've already written and posted those all up. My Jaja isn't even as much of a nag as you, he said with a grin. Simply leaning against a pillar, he watched her rush all about and his heart warmed. I can help you with boiling water? Or wiping down the pillars? You can't reach high enough to clean them, so won't I have to do it anyways? In the middle of wiping down a chair, she rolled her eyes in annoyance at him. If you could not take forever to wipe things down and also not lose track of where you throw your rags, I would thank the heavens and the earth. It didn't anger him at all but retained his cheer. Won't I just find them later? Speaking of it, Ah Dong, why do I get the sense that you've been a lot more diligent these days? You aren't even eating so vigorously anymore. Were you thinking to save food for me? She stuck out her tongue and said, 
it's not that. Brother Sui gave me a scolding that one day. What did he say, he asked, startled. How come I had no idea? It wasn't anything really. She giggled. He just said that you work hard in the bureau so I shouldn't concentrate on having fun while ignoring you. He hadn't expected that Sui Jo would remember that incident. Obviously, it was because he had gotten ill from sitting out with the chilly winds that the other had remembered, then had gone to talk to Ah Dong in private. Tang Fan knew that Ah Dong had not actually forgot to cook for him because she was playing around but because he had been so busy at that time. By the time he was home, he was so tired that he went straight to sleep. She would cook but he would have eaten elsewhere, meaning he wouldn't need to when he returned and then the food would just go to waste. After several instances of this when she hadn't been sure on whether he would come home to eat on any given day, she had stopped cooking. Now that those irregular days had passed, everything had resumed back to normal. He was a little guilty now though, feeling that he had made little Ah Dong into a scapegoat. I'll find some day to explain that to him. There's no need. Ah Dong still looked to be smiling. I know that since he's speaking to me, he's treating me like a little sister. If I was irrelevant to him, he wouldn't even bother to talk to me. I'm young but I know who's good to me, like Madam Lee, Chun Ji, and all the rest from before. I care about everyone that's good to me. Who's bad to you, then, he teased. She shook her head. I forgot. I was sold to the Lee family as a slave and the people who sold me weren't nice but I don't remember what they look like anymore. Didn't you tell me before, Gig? You have to remember kindness not hatred, so that you can be happy on the daily. Right. He laughed. Ah, it's really gratifying to be a big brother since you remember every word I say. Judging from how careless you are, I had thought that you would only think to eat all day long. She rolled her eyes again and said, eating is the most important thing, and everything else is secondary. You taught me that, too. When did I ever teach you that? He choked, side-eyeing her. Isn't that just, a bit incompetence? Yes. You sure are incompetent. Okay, then. You're getting more and more unruly, he said, looking monstrous. Them bickering was normal so she wasn't scared of him at all. Upon hearing that, she made a silly face, then continued to clean the chairs. Nonetheless, in the middle of this period of bustling frenzy, the new year unwittingly arrived. It began on the first day of the first month, officials' vacations started from that very day and went until the fifth, for a total of five days. Someone's about to ask, dear gods, such a short vacation for the year's end. No, no. Starting from the 11th of January, there would also come a 10-day lantern festival vacation, the biggest holiday of the year. If there had been a nationwide disaster previously, the festival would have gotten cancelled. The emperor's excuse would have been very dignified then, the citizens below us are destitute and displaced, so how could all of us have the mind to celebrate? Then, not only would the vacation be cancelled but the lantern market would get cancelled, too. Thankfully, the year had passed peacefully. There had been some calamities but they had ended up gradually subsiding instead of getting prolonged into the new year. No one's holiday needed to be called off. The biggest event right now was the happenings in the northern border. It was heard that when Wang Ji's group had just departed the capital, they happened to run into a bunch of Tartars plundering the Daitong area. The government army had rushed to combat in the front lines, their situation was unclear to this day. Though the vacation only really started on New Year's Day, the bureau had pretty much been closed up since the day before the New Year's Eve. They still needed to work that day as per usual but the bureau was nearly half empty. Those able to request leave had all requested it and left, leaving the few that couldn't go behind. They meandered around the bureau doing not a thing and before the Shishin to even came, they closed its doors. It wasn't yet dark and few were on the streets since everyone was rushing back for New Year Eve's dinner, making it an unknowable amount of times bleaker than it normally was. However, 
This stillness was unlike the typical cheerless desolation from after nightfall, as the rich aroma of food was drifting out of every home alongside the intermittent laughter of children, sounding much livelier than usual. There were even sporadic bangs of firecrackers in the distance. Without anyone being aware of it, another early spring had come. Citizens worked all year round, hustling and bustling, for no other purpose than being able to reunite with their entire family, peacefully sitting down for the New Year Eve's dinner. If they could have a couple more dishes of fish and meat on the table, too, it would be the biggest feast of the year. Inside this three-courtyard residence situated in the north of the city, Tang Fan now had A Dong. He didn't need to spend this new year alone. In spite of Sui Zhou having moved out, his parents still loomed above him, so he had to return to them for a reunion dinner. He had invited Tang Fan and A Dong to come with him but the former had declined, saying that this would be the first new year that A Dong and he would be spending together. They ought to celebrate it as a sibling together. Since he had said as much, Sui Zhou wouldn't force him. He went to the Sui family by himself while the other two stayed behind. Tang Fan's initial acknowledgement of her as a sister had stemmed from her plea, he hadn't had the heart to watch her get passed around to another family, a little girl senselessly sent to be a slave yet again. Thus, he destroyed her slave contract, restored her freedom, and adopted her as a sister, allowing her to have some future support. Had her personality been bad or if she hadn't gotten along with him, he would have returned the slave contract to her and helped her find a good family to settle with instead of placing her at his side. This was simply their good fate. Ever since her addition to his family, he pretty much never had to sully his hands for anything, even for New Year Eve's dinner. Because he had tried to help with cutting vegetables only to chop them messily and thus, got kicked out of the kitchen by the small girl, who mocked him for being pampered. He had no choice but to awkwardly stand to the side and fetch tableware. Prefect Tang, who could speak frankly to the Western Depot's director without backing down, was now getting ordered around by a little girl but his heart was warmed and delighted about it. By the time the sky had gone completely dark, the square table was fully arranged with food. Since Sui Zhou wasn't coming back and it was only the two of them, the amount of dishes was fixed, being nothing more than four main dishes, kanji, and one kind of dessert. Due to the Tang siblings being both food lovers, Ah Dong's culinary skills had made a lot of progress under Master Tang's influential pickiness, and she was beginning to master utilizing all sorts of tricks during cooking. Therefore, amongst the four main dishes, two were meat dishes and the other two were vegetable dishes, which were much more meticulously prepared than those of a normal commoner's. One of the meat dishes was meatballs made from chicken breast, which could be dipped in sesame paste and eaten. It was most delectable and sweet. There was also that honey roasted leg of lamb that Tang Fan had hungered after for a long time. Ah Dong had learned the way to make it from Sui Zhou, fiddling with it until it was exactly as how he made it. She herself stated that her heat management was inferior to his but Tang Fan had never eaten his version before, only Ah Dong's, so he had nothing but praise. One of the vegetarian ones was mock goose, tofu skin stuffed with boiled yams, glutinous rice, bamboo shoots, shiitake mushroom and other such ingredients, then wrapped, after which the whole thing would get pan fried. Once cooked well, it would be taken out, sliced into chunks, and arranged into an overlapping stack pattern on the plate. Arranging them was a simple task Ah Dong had been too busy to do it, so she had passed it to Tang Fan. Other people would neatly arrange them in three and place them tidily, then be done with it but Master Tang just had to be creative in wanting to arrange them in the character for year. The end result was that his craftsmanship was poor, the arrangement was messy. Ah Dong berated him as the dish became the most chaotic looking one on the dinner table. The other vegetable dish was chow mein, but it hadn't been stir-fried like the average person would have done it. It was instead cooked with chicken stock and with bamboo shoots and mushrooms. When those three flavors permeated the noodles, the dish was greatly changed. The staple dish was chicken kanji boiled with ham. A whole chicken had been bought, the breast meat had been used to make the meatballs, 
while the rest of it had been put to boil into a broth for a full two shishan. Though it was all liquid with no meat, it had a very rich chicken flavor. The white and soft kanji slightly smelled of it throughout, fragments of ground ham vaguely seen within it. Once it's inside the mouth, it was fresh and sweet, its aftertaste savory. There was an additional fruit dessert for the after meal, candied tangerines that Adong had made ahead of time. For a two-person dinner, it was exceptionally sumptuous. Viewing this table of delicacies, Tang Fan sighed. I haven't eaten a full New Year Eve's dinner in many years. How many? Adong asked curiously. He thought about it and said, about seven or eight years, at least. My parents died when I was thirteen, I became a county honorate at fourteen, my elder sister married away at fifteen. After that, I left home to travel, went and took the imperial exams, became a palace honorate, then a capital official. That's around eight years. As I recall, the last time I went to see my sister, my nephew was still stumbling over his words, so he ought to be starting his studies now. Who knows if he even remembers me. Doesn't that make me an aunt, then, she asked excitedly. Heaped in laughter. Sure, sure. My sister had him after three years of marriage, so he's five now. He is only three years younger than you, yet is a generation below you. He probably won't like that much when he grows up. She was happy for a minute then got a bit worried shortly after. I have a lowly birth family background, though. Will making him call me and disgrace him? You're so young. Do you even know what disgrace is? Don't use strong words so casually. He patted her on the head. Now that your surname is Tang, you're part of our family. I'll add your name to our family registry when I have the time to return to Jiangnan for ancestral worship. Someone's nobility doesn't lie in their background but rather depends on their personality. The founding emperor of this dynasty had come from a poor Buddhist household, no higher than you are, and he didn't feel himself inferior because of that. Does the realm not kneel and worship him with every citizen looking up to him? You may be female, but don't take on those rotten defects of self-injury and self-pity. She nodded, half understanding. Gag, you teach me how to read, but I'm dumb and can't learn a thing. Won't I bring shame to the Tang family? Is big sister really good at studying? She is. When she was studying in the inner chambers, she was one talented woman. However, I'm not making you learn to read because I want you to be like her, reciting poetry and painting, but to have you understand the principles of human integrity. That doesn't demand very deep knowledge. Once you're able to comprehend fantasies and contemporary novels, you can be considered to have graduated. It had to be said that Master Tang's tutelage of his little sister really stood out from the crowd. Everyone else used the works of distinguished sages as teaching materials, being of the four books for women's class at the very worst. He, on the other hand, used fiction stories as objects of reference, unworried about the girl learning from bad examples. The principal lesson of casting away evil and looking towards goodness is pretty much everywhere, he continued. It was not only the writings of distinguished sages who has them but even common written works as well. I'll pick out a couple of them later that are fun to read and once you're able to go through them and explain them, I won't have to stare at you while you study anymore. Alright? If I still have time then, can I learn martial arts from Brother Sui, she asked happily. He was shocked. You want to learn that? She nodded. I've been a little stronger than others ever since I was little. He said that I have a good foundation, so I'd be suitable for the arts. He also said that I'm at a good age to start with it. If I waited for a few more years, it will be too late. When I learn them and go climb trees for acacia leaves to make those noodles from now on, you won't be able to fight over them with me. Others claimed that when they finished learning martial arts, those with high aspirations would inevitably report to the imperial family, aim to place as a martial prime scorer, then kill enemies on the battlefield from then on. Even if Adong was female, 
her being in shape, knowing self-defense, and still being a food lover were not three incompatible qualities. Tang Fan was, surprisingly, happy to hear this. All right, then. We'll plant a couple of fruit trees in the yard and I'll leave everything to you when it's time to harvest. How about we plant pear and jujube ones? A lot of desserts can be made with those. I can make snow pear stewed rice and jujube paste cakes. Auntie Zhang from next door taught me how. She started drooling. Sounds good, he beamed. They spoke in high spirits. Indeed, those who were not family would not step through a family's door. As they talked and laughed, the siblings finished their dinner, then cleaned up the dishes was about to start the custom of staying up until the new year. Normally, people would sleep earlier in the night but this was one exception the whole family keeping watch on the new year eve, a tradition passed down from ancient times that had never been altered to the current day. Still, the night was endlessly long. Children could set off fireworks but adults had to think up a bunch of tricks to whittle away their time. Right now, it was just them two at home. Tang Fan was unwilling to pass the whole night reading storybooks, so he found a couple of games for them to play. Games like Wiki would have been fine if Ah Dong hadn't been too young to understand any of them, merely getting her first glimpse into their doorways. The disparity in power between them was really too great, making it not fun to play. So he found a vase and some bamboo sticks for the two to play pitch pot with. They made a bet on who could get the most in, five turns for one round, winner two out of three. The loser would have to stand at the door and bark like a puppy three times. It was obvious that Tang Fan's childish heart have not died yet as he played with enthusiasm. However, after one round, he noticed that something was amiss. How come your accuracy is so good? Is it an intrinsic talent? What's an intrinsic? I've never eaten one of those. Hee <laughs> hee, I think your daily reading dosage needs to be a little heavier. What I meant is, were you born with the talent of playing pitch pot, or something? No. After I bugged brother Sui about teaching me martial arts, he gave me a small bow, then made me shoot at tree leaves every day. He said that once I could hit them, I would barely be meeting standards. Have you shot any? I did but it would only be one or two times out of ten tries. They were all blind luck, she said, embarrassed. I'm starting to think that suggesting to play this with you was a mistake. She blinked. Are you going back on your bet, Gig? I'm not, but can we have a discussion to null the stakes, he weakly asked. Ah Dong was typically muddled-headed yet quite devious at critical moments. No way. You said before that people need to keep their words, and that a promise is worth a thousand gold. He angrily bopped her on the head. I've never, ever seen you be lively while studying, but now you're spouting illusions. The rounds aren't over yet, so it's hard to say who'll win and who'll lose. He was pumped up for a victory. However, physical talent was an innate gift and Master Tang couldn't get strong with effort alone even if he had the will to making his death throws useless. On the very next turn, he still lost. Two out of three, the rules he had set himself was now causing him suffering. Ah Dong just laughed evilly. You put the bet, you accept the loss. Tang Fan didn't want a little girl to have a low opinion of him, of course. He believed that since it was New Year Eve's night, no one would be out on the street anyways. What was wrong with opening up the gate and making a couple of sounds? Anyone that heard it would just think it was someone else's puppy barking. Of course, I'll accept it, he said calmly. Your big brother is as good as his word. When have I ever reneged? You'll have to watch my excellent moral character and learn. His conduct of a former king peddling melons made her make a weird face. The girl followed after his steps for the purpose of watching him make a fool out of himself. Upon opening the courtyard door, two red lanterns were hung above the entrance that cast off some shadows the more the light swayed, which made things look more joyous. Hardening his heart, Mr. Tang shouted out, Woof! 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 
Before the final bark was made, someone suddenly appeared before his eyes, nearly scaring him to death. Upon closer inspection, he discovered that it was Sui Zhou. Tang Fan. Sui Zhou. Master Tang immediately felt like he had thrown his face all the way to his grandmother's house. He, as the villain, was the first to complain. Why are you here? I didn't even hear your footsteps. I never make noise when I walk, Sui Zhou answered in exasperation. Why are you standing out here and barking like a dog? With Ah Dong's giggles coming behind him, Tang Fan's face turned red. He lost a bet. Sui Jo nodded with an O and asked, What were you playing? Pitchpot, Tang Fan blurted, abruptly coming back to his senses. Why are you back this early? You're not staying there to keep watch all night. No, the other said as they walked in together. He didn't explain much but with how smart Tang Fan was, he knew that he must have met with something extenuating at his family home, for him to simply come back after he was finished eating. Thus, he asked no more, only smiling as he said, you've come back at just the right time. Playing board and cards is fun with three people. I can't play if it's just Adong, because it would be too easy to win. She pulled a sly face at him. Sure. That's why you chose the very difficult pitch pot, which you still lost. Damn girl. He put on a malevolent expression in response, raising a hand to fake that he was going to hit her. The little lady immediately giggled and bounded far away. We're going to keep watch at night, so I'll go and prepare tea for you too. Watching them squabble, a slight smile involuntarily showed up on Sui Jo's face. He thought to himself that it was good to come back, without saying a thing, he could simply watch them and felt happy. If Tang Fan could claim to feel that this was the first New Year that he fully celebrated since he was separated from his family, Sui Jo could claim the same, as well as Ah Dong. All three of them had different experiences in life, yet they were able to come together by fated chance. It was said that ten years of cultivated karma in the previous life would let people share the same boat. To be able to live under the same roof? That was at least fifty years. The three played games. With the addition of Suijo, things swiftly became a little more interesting, making the passage of time relaxing and enjoyable. Tang Fan didn't insist upon exerting all of his power to make a full frontal assault, either, everyone won and lost against each other, chatting and laughing, time passing without them noticing it. As midnight approached, the sounds of firecrackers both near and far became increasingly frequent. Setting those off was not only to greet the new year but also to do away with the old year. Many people hence lit a cluster of them up prior to midnight in addition to those lit afterwards, symbolizing the out with the old, in with the new. Naturally, their own group had also bought firecrackers. Sui Jo went out to light them, while Ah Dong brought and placed them in the courtyard after him. The slight clamor of fireworks livened up the alleyway, bang bang bangs popping off in the ears, and the entire little yard was fittingly illuminated for a split second with the dazzling light. Ah Dong clapped her hands, yelling and laughing. There was a prosperous ambience, despite there only being the three of them. With everything set off, Ah Dong ran to the kitchen to get the dumplings. They had been wrapped up a while ago, and there was no special marking to indicates which were stuffed with minced pork with cabbage or with three vegetables. The white, tender dumplings bobbed in the boiling water, but once they were fished up and put onto a plate, Sui Jo went dumbfounded with one look at them. He could see that there were finely wrapped, nice-looking, top-notch dumplings as well was messily wrapped and crookedly-looking ones. As soon as the badly wrapped ones had been boiled, some of their skins broke open to expose their fillings, which was now a real ghastly sight. The thick-skinned Master Tang just grinned and said, Ha! Looks like that filling wanted to see who was going to eat it and came running out. Sui Jo and Ah Dong looked at him at the exact same time. Though they did not speak, their thought was the same, you really have no shame. Tang Fan acted like he didn't see that, reaching out to pick one up, dip it in vinegar, ate it, then did not neglect to praise himself. 
they're really good, which shows that the craftsmanship of the one that wrapped them was really good. Eat, you too. Don't just watch me. Come, come. This degree of shamelessness could be stated as having reached a new level. The other two, having nothing to say, could only duck their heads to eat. A short time later, Adong cried out in shock, then spit a copper coin out of her mouth. You've eaten yourself to fortune. Tang Fan said with a smile. You'll have great luck in the coming year. Extraordinarily pleased, Adong happily wiped the coin clean, then put it on the table. Not long after, Sui Zhou also got one. Tang Fan and Adong said their congratulations, as per customs. Not long after again, Tang Fan got one, too. This repeated several times. At the end of it, Adong was no longer happy. Gaig, how many coins did you actually put in these, she sulked. Thirty dumplings had been put on the plate. Excluding those inferior products that had started out broken, the three had altogether found thirteen coins. Putting those in dumplings had been for the sake of seeking well wishes but now, they were showing up nearly every time to press painfully against their teeth. Tang Fan and Sui Zhou were more careful, but that was it. Adong nearly had a mouthful of broken teeth, howling in anguish again and again. Upon seeing her like this, the remorseless Master Tang laughed heartily. I never got to bite on copper coins as a kid, yet. I put some more in this time so that I wouldn't miss out. Who's the one making you bite so hard when you eat? She wasn't to be outdone and they started bickering again. By the time Sui Jo had cleaned up the tableware and turned back around, the little lady was finally a bit tired. She rubbed her eyes but her face was so full contentment that it never did before. Gag, do you think that we can spend every new year like this from now on? She pulled through by sitting beside Tang Fan, doggedly waiting for midnight's arrival. What do you say to that, Kuang Chuan? Tang Fan asked Sui Zhou, who had just walked in, as he rubbed her head. Sure, was all General Sui Bei who answered briefly yet strongly. End chapter. <laughs>